Rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling. Lock it up. One take, one marker. Thank you, Chris. Do you guys notice anything different? No. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm like dressed for the first You're time not. in a century. You're not. You're wearing a fucking sweater. Oh Are you my joking? Gosh, I'm head to toe Abercrombie. We're wearing the same <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> Want to talk about how we just almost scared each other to death? Uh, yeah, I let myself in in the garage with for like the first time I remembered the go- the code, <laughs> and then I get to the front door and this bitch gets to the front door and we both throw it open at the same time and then scream at the sight of each other and almost die of a heart attack. But I'm sure Shane's awake and also so mad that we woke him up because the way we screamed was yeah. bloody murder. I'm positive Shane just hates me. Period. <laughs> like. <laughs> Whenever I'm in his house, I'm screaming and stealing. That's it. I'm just screaming and stealing. Also, Shane, like, thank you so much for accommodating my screaming and stealing. Like, super accommodating. Well, I knew that you didn't know how to open the garage, even though I've told you the code 500 but I did times. It. No, I know, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. So that's why I was like printing all the documents and running out the door to come get you. And then right. <laughs> this has been happening Surprise. to me a lot lately, though. Last night, I like turned on the TV. And I start like going about my way in my room and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it starts, the TV starts talking with the screen black and it was playing the show that I had been playing, but uh, I never thought I was going to die more until this morning. So this is like two events in 24 hours. My heart rate is not unwell. Joe's computer in his office at our house is linked to his computer at his office in uh, Burbank. And I got home the other day and was like, there was an Amazon guy who was being weird at my front door. So I just was like, I'm going to wait in my car for this to be over. (laughs) And then like I waited long enough and like I thought he was gone. And then he like popped out of the bushes again. I was like, holy shit, this is how I die. What the (laughs) fuck is he doing? And then he just wound up being kind of nice. And then I felt like an asshole. And he but he looked like, you know, the guy who took poly class like he scared me. And so then I get in the house and there's just absurd music blasting from Joe's computer. And I was like, he was in the house. <laughs> but it was just Joe who was trying to figure out ending credit so- like music to play for a project that he's working on. Oh. And he was doing it from his office but it, in Burbank, but it was playing at his office in the house. Because oh. I texted him. I was like, I think someone was in our house. Are these all signs from the universe, though? Like, should we add up the signs? No, I think the signs are that we're... Sp- Stupid. Stupid, yeah. We're stupid. But we're so cute. We're so fucking cute that it's okay. It mean it's like that's how we, we evolved. We had to be super cute because we're super stupid. <laughs> this is Darwinism at its finest. Also, you guys. What? Welcome back to another episode of the SIF. I'm your host, Lizzie Gordon, joined as always by Ryland Adams. <laughs> Do you like how aggressive I'm getting? Is it too much? You like didn't <laughs> I need you to practice that a few times. I don't times. know what the words I'm are. I'm fine with you taking over the intro, but I would like you to practice a few times in the what mirror. What are the words? <laughs> Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of the SIF. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by Elizabeth Home, okay. Also, my name changes depending on where I introduce myself. Right. It's a weird thing. Chris, get that headset on. Oh. Oh, oh are we going to talk about it? He's acting. Talk about what? About cr- what Chris does. What, oh. what do I do? Oh. <sighs> Turn him down. You want to get right into there? I was just going to ask Chris how he is and if his life has been scary. Oh, go ahead. It's, I'm good. <laughs> Check What's in happening? on him before we <laughs> crucify him publicly. What? Mm-hmm. What's happening? You got a nice haircut. You put a hat on so the, the audience can't even see it. I'm, well, he's wearing it backwards so that he doesn't look bald. <laughs> I woke Upon up late. Upon my direction, I which up. I really appreciate that you followed that, Chris. Okay. Continue. You woke up late. And rushed over here. From so where? My pl- I just didn't have time. I just was a sleepy boy. I edited till late in the morning, so. Cutie boy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to show your big news, Chris? What's my big news? That you got a dog. Oh, I thought that was announced. Have we said it on the podcast? I don't remember. I was so blacked out with rage last episode that I don't remember much. It was like murder rage and couch rage, like combined. Oh, well, I, I yeah. did. I, I rescued. There was a dog that was on the street when we were, I was picking up, we were picking up a friend and then this dog runs up and it's like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Matted fur, clearly abandoned, way too skinny. Like had clearly been out on the street for days and abandoned. Mm-hmm. And it was the sweetest dog I'd ever seen. She and was. She was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know at the time. Right. And, uh, and she was so cute and sweet. And like, I was just like, I, get, I need to, I need to bring you home with me. Yeah. There's no way I can leave you here. And, and I did. And what's her name? Her name's Oreo now. Oreo. <laughs> because um, if you look at her from the side. She looks like an Oreo cookie because she has a she has a perfect white slice in between her beautiful black fur. And doesn't she have blue eyes? Am I making that up? 
You don't even know the eyes Off of your own daughter? I don't, I don't think they're wow. blue. This is why I said you should take her. Anyways, so when Chris <laughs> was picking up the couch, Oreo came over, and I think Oreo's in love with me. Oh, the no, caller's blue. No, she doesn't blue. have blue eyes. She is cute. She's a cutie pup. She is so cute. Her little snoot. And she's the most lovable dog ever. Like, she kept throwing her body into me. Aww. Like, she couldn't get more close to me. And so I told Chris, he better lock his doors and that dog's going to be mine. <laughs> she I mean, I'm you. working on bringing the dog to you. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm trying to steal that dog from Chris and bring it to you. Well, I'm trying to do that, too. <laughs> and Shane's even more on board than I am. We're all plotting how to get this dog from Chris. <laughs> it's like, I'm glad you're happy and you have an emotional support animal, but I also want the dog. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that hard to get it. Why? I don't know. I feel like we're all, like, violent. <laughs> what do you mean? And Chris is a little bit like submissive, so we'll just be like, give it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we'll just corner him I... in a dark alley with a couple of switchblades, snapping our fingers, West Side Story style. You and he'll not... just be like, okay, okay, okay. And we'll you be like, tell wanna... no one. You're giving people more ammo against you. Let him have it. Justice for Lizzie. <laughs> for Lizzie? Yeah. You are the most uh, privileged person on the podcast. Is that true? <laughs> Is that true? Have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> With my Abercrombie shirt? Also, the reason why I asked if you were going to wear this again is because I now want it. Which, of course, you <laughs> That's do. ammo for the podcast. Lizzie took... Okay, so Lizzie <laughs> took me shopping this weekend, and we did, we're doing, like, a best friend buys my outfits videos after she dragged me to filth on this podcast, and the whole audience agreed with her that... Uh, I wouldn't say it's, like, a best friend buys your outfits. I would say it's, like, a best friend compassionately ushers <laughs> you into the real world uh, to save you from embarrassment. Whatever. So while she was shopping for me, I was shopping for myself. And of course, I just get a bunch of like comfortable, pretty sweaters. And I will say, as soon as I picked this out, you were like, you don't need that one. Ew. And then I put I did it on. I feel that way strongly. And then I put it and I said, well, it's going to look really good in the podcast shed with the blues and the wallpaper. It's going to look great. And she just like gave me a no face. And then I was checking myself in the mirror, telling everyone how beautiful the sweater is. And she goes, are you going to need that? Because I'll take <laughs> I was just wondering if you were going to wear it again or if it was like a one-use wonder because it's such a statement piece. No, I'm going to no. wear this all the time. Okay, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but we are twinning in our... Uh, Abercrombie like, and jeans. So here's the thing. I was trying out something new and I always wear skinny jeans that are tailored at the bottom because I just think it looks better with the way like it ends and then your shoes there. I concur. The baggy like whoosh, whoosh, like too much happening at the mm -hmm. bottom of your ankle is too much for me. But these were like a 90s fit from Abercrombie yeah. and I thought like maybe I could be in style because I feel like that's what all the young trendy people bit are doing. Yeah. And then I put them on this morning and I thought this isn't for me. And then I saw Lizzie rolled them up. So I rolled mine up. But I feel like all this is doing is making me look more like a lesbian. I we have to agree with that. I give off a strong <laughs> lesbian vibe myself. So the fact that you're feeling that only confirms how much of a lesbian vibe I myself give off. <laughs> but I think we look cute. Of course. Super cute. I thought I looked so cute this morning. I went, what is wrong? Oh, it's a G for Gordon. It's oh, I was like, is this how you tell me there's a bug on my titties? Oh my God, are my shirts unbuttoned? Help me. Hold my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I'd like to unmute Chris really quickly and go back to him. Okay, I'll, I'll help his sister out. Am I literally busting out of this top? Is this a problem? <laughs> Should I unbutton it? I mean, the microphone's covering the necklace in that area. There we go. We're just going to unbutton it because obviously my, my tickle bitties are <laughs> bursting out. So as we're going to the mall, I spent the day editing with Chris and then we decided to go to the mall with Ryland Adams um, on Saturday night. So we're walking out to my car. Chris and I are carpooling because gas prices are atrocious. And so he's on the phone with a friend of his <laughs> and proceeds to get into my fucking car still on a phone call with his not significant other. <laughs> Oh and in his mind, it's okay for him to sit in my car, front seat, just the two of us, and have a private phone call for the fucking 10 minute ride to the mall. <sighs> Can we, is that? And then he, he proceeded to defend that choice as something that all of him and his friends do. And I feel like, get them on the phone right now because I need to tell them that that is an inappropriate use of phone. What do you think about that? So you regularly, like when you're one, you don't think it's a little odd to have a conversation when you're one-on-one -on -one with someone else enclosed in a certain space? I mean, I've just like, me and I'm like, okay, let's go back to my previous relationship, right? For the last 10 years, I've been in a relationship. And every time I got a call from Kalani, I would answer the phone. 
and it doesn't matter if I'm in the car with my friend Vincent or whoever, Hugo, shout out. Um, I would just answer, <laughs> and uh, and it wasn't a big deal. They would same thing with them. They would answer if they're yeah, but how long are called. you on the phone? I mean, I was on the phone for a minute with you, Lizzie Top. Because so I let's said, be clear. because I said, are you fucking kidding me? Because you should have ended that call before we got in the car, and you, there was no sign of end in sight. Okay, here's the. Oh, Had I not ended it, would you have ended it? Did they That's start going into know. like a morning routine or something? It was basically like, yeah, how are you? Oh, yeah, you're doing this, you're doing that. Like, right? I was like, how was your day? Your day was good. Mine. This is what I've been doing today. Like, let's. Oh, those gas prices. The weather's wild. And Lizzie like, needs constant attention. You no, can't. it's not. It's not that. It's what the fuck? Because I had said I might need to take a work call. So like, I, and I apologize. Like, and that's different. A right. work call is different, but a private personal call about fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, here's the thing. Wait, I need an answer from him. Would you have hung up had I not said? Are you fucking kidding me? Shortly after, yeah. What's shortly? Like a couple minutes. See, that's insane. <laughs> So the, 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 the here's call, the thing. The, it should have been before he got in the car. Hey man, I'm getting into the car with my friend Lizzie, so I'm gonna get off the fucking phone. I'll now. give Chris the like. If it were you, I wouldn't answer. Like the other day, I was watching. You called me over the weekend, yeah. and I silenced you, and you were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, and I was like, "Well, I'm in the living room watching a TV show with Shane, and I'm not gonna like make him stop the show. Do that. So I'd have to, I'd have to commit to walking out of the room exactly. to answer your phone call. And that's super respectable, and, and I so understand that's that. Where, yeah. that's where I agree with you where I don't agree with you is if I was on if I was doing something with friends and Shane called I would answer but I'd also hang up on him within 15 seconds if you were just in a car with you and Shane Wait, called me here's the thing did he call you or did you call him the second we left your house he called me okay that changes things a little bit for me <laughs> that changes things a little bit for me still it didn't feel like you were gonna hang up within minutes and also within minutes is too many you know what I mean <laughs> it's like hey baby like love you I should have said shut up and hung up I should have. you should have said listen bitch you're not my boyfriend you don't need to know where I'm going no but you like I mean like the fact that he called makes it different I honestly thought you called him and we're proceeding to have a conversation that you had planned to have the entire drive to the mall because no. that was the vibe of the whole thing like there was no end in sight there was no because I sat there for I sat there for like a minute and, I, and then I was like you're kidding right I think I, I, I'm also just used to it too. Like again, like all of my friends do this. Like if we're in the car, we've done this a lot. So the, shout out Hugo. We're yeah. not going to do that anymore. U yeah, Hugo answers the, or Vincent. We'll just answer and, and talk Vincent? to the girlfriend. And half the time, I'll jump in and say hi, and then they'll talk for a minute, and then we go, and it's just normal. I mean, that's what I'm used to. I mean, the more that you say it, the more I feel like I might be the asshole. Yeah, I think that you should say something you like about Chris. I <laughs> honestly texted Chris and said he was one of the sweetest boys. It's in writing. We can put the asset here. Chris, you're the sweetest boy. Okay. And uh, all of my bullying comes from a place of love. I believe that that's true. Because I expect better from you. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, do you, you want don't to talk? Sorry. Speaking of, am I the asshole? I noticed that you had written something in the document and then deleted it from the document, and I was like, I'm not just gonna let this go un uh, unnoticed that oh. you had written, am I the asshole? So, am I the asshole? Elizabeth edition. I mean, I feel like we just covered it. What? No, I don't think we did. This said on set. Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> it was different, but I do think that like me as a person lizzie gordon might constantly be in situations where she is in fact the asshole but she may not be willing to admit it publicly on air right now which is probably why she deleted it from the notes document that might be that might be what you're alluding to um, so you want to tell us the scenario oh, fuck fine i guess because we're here now oh can i just circle back the only reason i was joking that you were the most privileged person here is because you can have a baby and i'm bitter about that right, right. now. so i don't actually believe that i was just there's my circle back. Oh, that's fine. I'm you know. sorry that you feel that way. Well, I, I, I don't think I actually do, but I oh, like. Okay. I no, like I just meant like because like, I, you can have a baby. Uh, well, I can. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't. Well, you can't physically, but that might also be considered a privilege. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we're still waiting for my friend's baby. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, we're getting close though, man. It feels like any fucking second now she's gonna go into labor and we're gonna have a little baby. A little baby, ooh, a tiny queen. I think, well, the most upsetting part is that it can't be me and my partner. Yeah, I get that. Combination. But so you could do a surprise situation where you mix the semens up and you never know. Well, that's what I was telling Shane because we want to have two kids yeah. at least. And so I said, we could just hand them both and whichever takes. Takes. There it is. And you never know. Yeah. Because honestly, you guys have similar features it might be hard to tell ever well we 
You know what I mean? <laughs> this process is getting really dark because it's just like searching, like there's like so many different facets to having a baby in a gay relationship. And when you start walking down it, it's just like, it makes you realize like it even more so the more you go down it. Yeah. I don't really know where I'm going with this. Oh, we did a baby. <laughs> You saying we have similar features. We went and like downloaded an app where we could put and it just both, both looks of, exactly like both each of other. our faces into and like generate a baby so we could see what our baby together would look like and then try to match it with like different potential donors and oh, see wow. the difference. And so do you have pictures uh, on Shane's phone? Damn. It's, well, when he wakes up, I'd like to see. We recorded it for a vlog. So, I mean, we're like documenting the journey of trying now that we are trying for sure that's fantastic i love yeah. that anyways i just wanted to tell you that's why i was joking because sometimes i'll joke to lizzie and say she has woman privilege which i know like men are well i do have to say that empirically women are a more beautiful gender than males yeah yeah sorry guys <laughs> okay anyways um what were you saying uh oh we can just completely avoid the topic oh entirely. no i remember oh, no, your no, no, onset no, 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 no. antics <laughs> so chris has already heard this we don't need to subject chris to the same conversation again i already screamed it at him all day if you really don't want to we can move on no i just don't, i'm pretty sure i was an asshole this past week on set because there was an intern <clears throat> Hold on, I'm, imp I'm, I'm choking on granola bar. <laughs> I'm choking on my granola privilege. My granola. Um, so there was an intern on this commercial set that I was working on. And he was just super loud, man. And it's like, there's nothing that bothers me more than a really fucking loud person on mm. set who shouldn't be heard. And no. I hear how that sounds. But I mean that. Like, honestly, I mean that. Like, I've shadowed people. And the main note that you get from a person you're shadowing before you shadow is... You should not be seen or heard. You are my shadow. Well, especially on a film set. I mean, that's why when you're in a sound stage, when they're rolling, it's apparent they're rolling because they yeah. have all the red lights and everyone's shutting. The yeah, screaming, lock it up! Yeah. That was too loud for even me. So sorry for those of you that hate when I scream. <laughs> I'm licking the microphone. I'm out of control. Um, so he was just being very loud very loud like i heard him talk to like five people on set before he cornered me and he was like hi i'm an intern do you have any advice for me and it's like kid it is 7 a.m everybody has been here since 6 a.m doing a fucking job my advice to you is shut the fuck up <laughs> did you really that was a that is not what i said i said it very nicely <laughs> i said here's here's what i think you need to embody as a intern slash production assistant uh only answer or speak when directly spoken to and use the words yes no or i don't know nothing else well and your job doing that is to make everyone's life easier so yeah. you're not supposed to ask a bunch of questions that benefit you and your job you're... is to benefit the production and it's just there's an innate cringe value to it because you're 20 and everyone else there is not 20 right and you're saying i want to be a director and it's like those are great things like that's that was me you know what i mean but i never showed up in a place as an intern and spoke to anybody. No, honestly, being observant is going to teach you more than asking a bunch of people, like soaking in every aspect of all of the jobs that you can oversee when you're able to, when you have downtime in that sort of position. Exactly. And, you know, on a commercial set, you're in a unique position where a lot of the directorial communication is happening on channel one of a walkie, which everybody has access to. And so I said, you know, only speak when directly spoken to with the words yes, no, or I don't know in response. And then he's like, but what if it requires more problem solving? And I was like, no one's going to come to you to solve a problem. <laughs> so let that go. And then he was like, and I want to direct. And I was like, great. So here's what you should do right now. You hear how the director's talking on the walkie? You should be listening to that because this is the closest you're going to get to that man's workflow. And it is invaluable information that you get to observe while being paid to be here so you should be listening to that only right. also you want to get invited back if yeah. you want to keep uh, evolving and so the best way to do that is to not annoy others yeah and then he just it was a relentless situation where by the end of it i just said i think people are being too nice to you <laughs> <laughs> and then he laughed <laughs> maybe he was someone's kid i don't think he was he uh was telling me that he's 
uh, got an internship with the commercial production company that was in charge of the show. And it doesn't matter. Like totally a sweet boy. Total like like Labrador puppy vibes, like just wanted to do good. Mm -hmm. But it was the amount of. I don't know what it was. It was like the amount of entitlement to everybody's attention that really got my goat. (laughs) And I know that that's a lot coming from me because I also feel entitled to everybody's attention and time. But it's like, I don't know, maybe I hate myself enough to shut up when I should. Right. Like, I don't shut up here because it's a podcast where my only job is to talk. <laughs> yeah. But I am I the asshole? Well, I wasn't there. I'd have to really see your mannerisms because sometimes your mannerisms in public, even though I know you're being polite, are never the way that I would interact with others. Like when you're going down like a salad line ordering a salad, <laughs> you're just more direct than I would ever be. And and Lizzie's not her. She's not being mean, but she's more direct. Whereas if like I was on the other end of that, you would leave and I'd be like, that girl was kind of a bitch. Right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> There were like multiple. I was trying so hard with this kid too, because like at the end of the night, there was uh, uh, someone had asked him to do something, and he did it, and he came back, and it was a wrong direction. Somebody gave him a wrong direction, and he was like, "Production was really mad at me. Should I go explain to them that that wasn't my idea, that I was just doing what I was told?" And I said, "Absolutely not." He's like, "Well, it really reflects poorly on me, and like I don't want them to be mad at me. Like I want them to call me back." And I was like, "So here's the deal." The amount of energy it takes to not remember just you, but also this exchange is too fucking much for anyone. And he was like, but it's my character. I want them to know, like, I wasn't my idea. And I was like, again, you taking any more time from these people is going to reflect more negatively on your character. And he's like, I just think I should go tell him. I was like, do whatever you want to do. But honestly, this was not a character assassination. And I would just move on. <laughs> and he's just relentless. All right. He's like, how okay. old are you? I was like, 31. No. <laughs> no, you're not. You're so funny. I'm just like, none of this is a fucking game for me. I'm done with this man. I hate him. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> is it wrong that I'm okay with that? <laughs> this is why I didn't want to talk about it. Because like I'm, I'm passionate about it. It's like just some kid I'll never fucking see again. Honestly, don't even remember his name. <laughs> fucking can't even. All right. I'm Next- not my boiling point with these kids it's like this next generation really needs to face some fucking abuse (laughs) too close to the mic i but like honestly when you're gonna scream maybe go away (laughs) honestly (laughs) i worked for fucking brian singer whoa yeah sorry okay It's just Monday, guys. You did put a lot of cinnamon in this coffee. I know. It's an a- Once it gets lower in the bottle, you're trying to tip it and it's never coming. And then you tip it and it's the whole fucking bottle. And it's then like, you're like, well, I guess I have to deal with it. It's like you set my soul on fire. Mm. But anyways, like the moral of the story is like there has to be a happy medium between, you know, nasty older people and younger people realizing that they're not entitled to everything. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's where we are. And, and that's, that's why where people we hate are. us too. <laughs> no, but here's the deal. We work really hard. Yeah. We work so hard. Do you know how fucking tired I am? And I wake up at three o'clock every morning to let my shitty Chewini take a crap outside. I'm tired. <laughs> Not you know another I mean? dog story on the document. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did want to say, Mr. Bubs' fucking poop order is all off. Last week or a couple weeks ago, I told you my boy was regular. He is not so regular anymore. Well, actually, no, he's very regular, but it's like he's too regular and it's too often. Something's up. <laughs> You've been pooping at 3 a.m. like every day of the week and that it's too much. too much. It is. It's too much. Do you want to go into your last thing, which I think is borderline harassment and I haven't even read the title yet, but I think like you and I just need to stop while we're ahead. With Claudia? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, I, think you, I was going to say this is this like, is harassment. I saw your, I saw her name on the document and I was like, this is like four podcasts in a row. We just got to leave the poor girls alone. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. They've entered my sleep space. I am now dreaming <laughs> about Claudia and Jackie, but this time they were my my dentists and I had to have a front tooth pulled because I'm trash and they're not and then Claudia was like you can stay at my swanky apartment with Adam Driver and I was like oh my god like that's normal for me (laughs) I'm Claudia's intern (laughs) well they're back today so thank god we'll have something else to listen to besides ourselves which by the way not good for me I should not be only listening to myself (laughs) 
I'm uh, rocking my YouTube Shane cup because he came back with a conspiracy video, a uh, conspiracy theory video yesterday, which you, ha- I mean, I hate when you do this. Monday. It really confuses me. I know, but for them when they're watching, <sighs> anyways, go check it out. It's very fun. Uh, so yes. And with that, we do have some ads for today's show before we get into our iced tea. Oh. Um, Should we cut all the intern stuff? That was half the podcast. I know, I'm so sorry. All right. Today's episode is sponsored by Coinbase. Now, cryptocurrency might feel like a secret or an exclusive club, but Coinbase believes that everyone everywhere should be able to get in the door. Whether you've been trading for years or you're just getting started, Coinbase can help you out. It's always good to diversify your portfolio. And why not think about cryptocurrency if you haven't already? Coinbase is backed by the world's leading investors and helps keep your portfolio safe and secure while adding crypto into your mix. Now they offer a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and send cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and a mobile app so you can trade securely and monitor all your crypto in one place. You can do all this today with Coinbase. So for a limited time offer, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash SIP. Sign up at coinbase.com com slash sip for ten dollars in free bitcoin this offer is for a limited time only so be sure to sign up today that's coinbase.com slash the sip lizzie and i and our husbands are all on coinbase oh your husband too mm-hmm Today's episode is also supported by Native. Now, when it comes to personal hygiene, who has the time to read that long list of ingredients on the back of the bottle? Some ingredients I can't even pronounce. And if you're like me and care about what goes on your body, then it's time to try Native personal care products, just like Lizzie and I. Every Native product is thoughtfully formulated to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day long. They're best known for their aluminum-free deodorant. Native wants to help you practice safe sweats, which is why they keep their ingredients bare naked with ingredients you understand like coconut oil, shea butter, and baking soda. They have 24 hour odor protection, naturally derived ingredients, a smooth residual free application and over 10 cents to choose from. Native's coconut and vanilla scented deodorant has been a fan favorite for years and they also have other scents like lavender and rose, cucumber and mint or even unscented. Uh, Now it's the time to switch from an antiperspirant to native. When you visit their site you can discover all of their fresh scents and maybe even try out one of their moisturizing body washes as well. They've also partnered with Baked by Melissa for a collection of scents that are delicious dessert scents. So smell fresh and feel fresh all day long with Native. Get 20% off your first order by going to nativedeo.com slash the sip or use promo code the sip at checkout. That's nativedeo.com slash the sip or use promo code the sip at checkout for 20% off your first order. One take two marker. Hey Chris, huh? yeah. why don't you just come back here really quickly? Oh, yeah. What's that? We, just, we just want to ask you a quick question. No. Okay. Do you feel bullied today? You having a good day on set? I, I always have a good day. I love this is my favorite job. Oh. Can you say it with a little bit? It feels like a hostage. Say it like you mean it. Stop blinking. <laughs> Don't blink into camera. No, I really no, do, do love you. Time. Okay, good. We were we were when we like had, had to stop down, I go, Chris, are, is is this too much today? And he was like, No, it's fine. I said, Do you feel bullied? He goes, No, and this he goes, You need to get that on camera. I'm <laughs> digging my acrylic nails into his back right now. He walks away with blood dripping through his white shirt. You're happy here, right, Chris? Yes. Good boy. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Thanks, Chris. We love you. <laughs> and by, we're so proud of your growth. <laughs> I mean that. It just seems. Why do you very, laugh at it? Like it's I'm a joke. just laughing. No, I am, and I think you're. I just. You're. <laughs> this is all about Lizzie, not about Chris. It's always about me. I even fucking gauge time based around my birth, which is psychotic, narcissistic behavior. I've told Chris multiple times you should drop me, but I do love you, Chris, and I want the best for your spirit. All right, let's get into some iced tea. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Although this first one isn't so icy. Like, it's pretty hot. It's like, it will burn you if you look too closely. I mean, by this point, Wednesday, it's going to be cold as fuck because yeah, no. multiple things will have happened between, and everybody's already reported on it. Right. So Skeet texted Kanye. How about that we're calling him Skeet now? Well, I mean, <laughs> he called himself Skeet. He said, hey, Kanye, it's Skeet. Yeah. So, I mean, he's playing into it. I, I, this... <laughs> I don't. I, well, here, what do you think? Well, I just expressed it with vocal <laughs> abnormalities. I personally, again, feel as though. Uh, do you know how the his leak his texts got linked? 
or leaked? I think Kanye. I, I no, didn't... I don't think it was Kanye. Chris, can you look up how Skeet's private messages got leaked? Because honestly, I, I, I know that he's facing a lot of public abuse and I'm not condoning what Kanye is doing either, but I do feel like texting a picture I'm in bed with your wife. Like you're not really here well, to make a peace offering. And so that's what really shocked me is. So if you haven't seen the text messages, which I know you have by now, it's that uh, Pete Davidson's in LA and he's texting Kanye like, Oh, your, your ex-wife is so good to the kids. And I don't like, if please take this privately. If you're in LA, let's meet up, like stop yeah. being a bitch behind the internet. And then Kanye was like, where are you right now? And he sent a picture of in bed with my wife. And that's what really in bed with your wife in bed with your wife. And that's, what really shocks me because Kim has stayed so above it all yeah and I think whatever you want about Kim Kardashian but I love that she can maintain being of such high stature so with so much power in that without having to live inside the drama and feed all of the narrative yeah. of the drama she kind of just stays her ground there was only one time I think that she's really kind of spoken out yeah and other than that she's been quiet so my question is do you think she got Pete got permission from Kim to post or to I mean, send Kanye that he he had to have because I can't fathom her being unaware of it you know what I mean <sighs> uh, Pete's friend leaked it so Pete took screen grabs of his conversation and sent it to his friend and his friend leaked it I, I don't know how the friend got it the article just says that Pete Davidson's friend leaked it right but what I'm saying is in order for someone to what color are the bubbles Pete's bubbles are blue yeah uh, let me look at oh so Pete's the one who screen grabbed it and sent it to his friend and his friend posted mm. it on Instagram which honestly he's he might not be a good friend or he was doing what Pete told him to do mm. and so then it's like Pete's doing Pete's just as bad as Kanye not just as bad I would say and not even close to as bad considering the amount of abuse that Kanye has been slanging out publicly and but I, it's like just the, the there's so much power in not engaging well I, I agree with you. And I think if Kim were to engage, it would just prolong the situation. Yeah. Like it's already devastating enough for her family unit, yeah. for her kids, for everyone involved. I think she's doing the right thing, but I just have- These texts are just so fan of the fire. Maybe she has also reached her boiling point and yeah. was like, whatever, like go for, like maybe- Yeah, and I, and I get it, you know, I because a big part of it is like, you can't control other people. You can only control yourself. She's controlling herself. Her man's wants to stand up for her. He wants to stand up for her. But I don't think this is a great way to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And with all of this, the trailer, the first trailer dropped today on Monday yeah. for Kardashian Hulu. Yeah. And I thought it was fantastic. I didn't see it. You What? Oh, no. You haven't watched? I meant to watch it when I got here, but I was so distracted by my horrible eyebrow situation and the fact that we scared the shit out of each other at the front door <laughs> that I completely forgot. <laughs> It looks, and I kind of dipped in and out of the Kardashians. I haven't really seen for like, I watched the first season years and years and years mm -hmm. ago, and then I'd pop in and out. But I think, so I can't really compare the two, but this trailer has me sold. Like I'm ready to go. Although I, it starts, the trailer starts with like B-roll of Kourtney Kardashian's fabulous house over the mountainside. And she's saying, uh, life without the cameras has been a big change for us. And I'm like... It, it's been a week. Literally, the show on E! just ended. Yeah. Like, I feel like that stopped being a thing yesterday. Yeah. What is going on? Sorry, my, is that your, you're getting a call? Oh, my phone's on do not disturb mode. Yeah, can we talk about that as well? It's literally on work mode. I know, but so I how have... Come that's, how come I'm getting a call anyways? I don't know, but I have a little bit of an issue with you. What did I do? Because... Your notifications are silent. So does that mean you don't get my text? No, that means I'm on work mode right now. I know, but it's always that. Every time I've ever sent you a text message, it says Lizzie has notifications silenced. <gasps> so you're just always in work mode. I told you I'm fucking busy, which is why I'm so irritated that these kids these days get one internship and feel entitled to everybody's time. So I work you, a what, lot. What I'm happens, always working. What happens when you're on work mode? I'm working. Uh, no, I know, but with your phone, like if I put my phone in work mode, it should mean that you can, that I'm not getting notifications. So, but if you open your phone, you'll see like a one next yeah. to your text message if yeah. you have a text. Yeah. Okay, got it. I've just always been curious because I'm always like, oh, why is she not getting my notifications? Also, love that you felt that and I didn't, and it's under my leg. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's all I could think about. It I literally like couldn't feel it. <laughs> So the Hulu. Anyways, yeah, I thought it was a weird opening line because they've 
haven't really ever taken a break from anything and they're always working but yeah. what i found is like jaw dropping and just heartbreaking to me is kim's obviously talking about her relationship with kanye she's talking about the relationship with pete we're gonna see what unfolds with uh courtney and travis mm -hmm. and it looks like we're gonna get to see a lot more of kendall and kylie which i'm excited about but uh kim says that uh Kanye told her her career was over. I need more context on that. I saw that on the mm. article. I read about it too. Yeah, I mean, everyone needs more context. That's why it's a trailer moment. Yeah. So it could be completely blown out of proportion. But I think if it's true that when they were getting a divorce and when they were settling, leaving each other for good, and Kanye really said, like, your career is over because I'm no longer I don't think with it's you. fair to speculate the because part mm -hmm. with so little context. Well, I'm saying if. I, know. I said I don't know, but I'm. That's what they were doing, putting that in the trailer. Like right. they know what they're doing. Yeah, they put that moment in the trailer because they knew it was going to get. And I don't know what other people are saying because it literally just came out two yeah. hours ago. But I can guarantee that's they knew what they were doing. It wasn't like a, you know. Yeah. But I agree with you. It's like we can't jump to conclusions. But and I've just as a person who watches this shit avidly and who also watches The Bachelor, it's like a lot of the times these trailers are like, mm, guys. <laughs> Did you just completely make that up to get me back here? Because nothing happened in this episode. So is the show not going to be good? I, I hope to God it's good. Because I've, I've always watched. I, I watch religiously. I spent like $50 on a YouTube app so that I could watch it remotely. And I love all of them. But the last, like, they were, it really seemed like they were trying to fill time in the last season of them. Oh, like doing really like, felt like they're, they're trying like to fill family time. Olympics. I was like, okay, this is like no, the but edits I also 10 minutes it. too long. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't, I had to dip out. Yeah. With, Kylie's literally not even showing up. <laughs> She's like, I'll be there. They're like, she's won't, she won't be there. Then they're like, it's the day of. They're like, yes, Kylie's not there. She's like, I was never gonna be there. I also love how Kylie's constantly getting like illnesses that she like can't show up for things. But it's just like, I just think Kylie doesn't like to show up for things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like always, she's like, I have a fucking cough. It's like. Who wants to leave their house? And when this your house is like Kylie too. Jenner's, yeah, it's, it's like, who wants to go anywhere? And it's and she doesn't have to work. She's like, I don't really have to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So Skeet's going to space? Yeah, yeah. Skeet's going to space with Bezos. Is this, like, real? Yeah, I guess he's going on March 23rd. But what I think is so fucked up and annoying, again, with the entitlements of this generation. Um, I think he's older than us. No, he's 28. So oh. Pete Davidson is 28. He just looks road hard and put away rough okay. or ro road rough and put away hard. What is it saying? No one here knows. Anyways, she's like, I'm with a bunch of fucking idiots. Oh, well, I'm just dead, fucking, fucking, at all of the sudden. <laughs> Life's. What's the big deal? Everybody's living their own. Well, I guess that's the right way to use. I don't even know how to use life's the way you use it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they're starting to call any motherfucker who goes to space an astronaut now. And I feel like astronauts who like fully trained are like, we've got to stop doing that. Pete that Davidson is, is not a motherfucking astronaut. Jeff Bezos, not a motherfucking astronaut. I mean, go to space, but I, yeah, but I the definition know. of it is like has been to space. And I just feel like all these astronauts are like, fuck you. Dedicating their entire life. Yeah. 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 Lives. And what does this mean? Uh, what, what does this mean? Like they just go up and right back they down? They go up for 11 minutes and come right back down. But every time this happens, I get like, and I wasn't even alive was check out when the challenger was i'm pretty sure i wasn't even alive when the challenger exploded but i get like that vibe every time like we had this huge fucking deal about sending a teacher to space and then it's like the world watched in real time as these people fucking blew up and died so every time this happens now i'm like can we just can we just not make such a big deal about it like because i also remember when i was like 13 or 11 another thing happened like that and it was just it's so upsetting and it's so public that it's like, oh my God, I can't handle it. And the, I, what? The Challenger explosion was January 28th, 1986. Yeah, I was not around. But I, I have like residual trauma from it and I wasn't even there. I don't even like getting on a plane and that's yeah. like proven to be safer than a car. So I don't think anyone has, I know, I guess there, I haven't looked into space. I know it yeah. seems to be very controversial, the whole space thing. So. Whatever. Mm. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, which is the easiest way to save when you're shopping on your iPhone or your computer. I love shopping online. We all do it all the time. So thanks to Honey, manually searching for a coupon code is a thing of the past. Honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart at checkout. So imagine you're just shopping on one of your favorite sites and then you go to checkout, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches and does its thing and honey if it finds a working coupon you'll just sit there and watch the prices drop now recently i was searching for new blue light glasses because i'm always on my computer and upon checkout i saved four dollars and 19 cents which is a crazy save and honey doesn't just work on your desktop it also works on your iphone too you just activate it on safari on your phone and save on the go if you don't already have honey you're straight up missing out on savings and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and you'll be helping in supporting our show we'd never recommend something we don't use so get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash sip that's joinhoney.com slash sip speaking of uh regular people who are rich enough to go to space elon musk and grimes had a sneaky link baby you sent me a TikTok about this. Yeah, so Grimes was like they had Grimes and Elon Musk had a baby girl under the fucking table. Nobody knew about and it. And so this was before they broke up. They're kind of off again, on again. Okay. They're like not totally off ever. And they're not totally on ever. Yeah. Well, they're like the strangest. That he sold all of his properties. They're where are they living now? I know that they're I think they're living in Austin. And I think that Grimes does kind of live with him. Well, they do have a child together. But so. they, I think they're both dating other people, but also each other. I honestly am not open-minded enough to even grasp the moving parts of their relationship. But I do know that Grimes was giving an interview with someone. And a baby kept crying. And they knew that X wasn't there, which is the baby that everybody knows about. Uh -huh. And Grimes just kept being like, Neh. And they were like, is that a fucking baby? And she's like, uh, um, so we had a baby <laughs> and nobody knew about it. But since you can hear it crying in either room, I Why guess you can hear that voice. That's what a grime sounds like in my head. <laughs> 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 Am I wrong? <laughs> Doesn't Elon have 10? I've never heard her talk, quite frankly. She has a, he has a shit ton of children. I, that's what I was saying. And some are like teenagers. So, And this is in his previous lives before Grimes? Pre-Grimes? Yeah. yeah. And where are all of them? I, I believe Austin? he has a really... Uh, I know that he has a... You don't have to go into yeah, this. Yeah, but I know that he has uh, a custody of... Not full custody, but visitation that's... Uh, something that he follows through on with all of his kids, kids. so that he has how many kids Chris? nine, what, nine? this yeah. is how you say nine I, you couldn't hear me i know but like this is how you say nine <laughs> how would you say nine nine oh yeah i would do that too i saw that tiktok <laughs> trend going around of did you see that oh, finger thing oh. No. About boyfriends that if you ask them to... I didn't understand it. I did see it. I didn't understand it. I also don't understand this. <laughs> yeah. It's also hard to say because you do have those finger ticks. I can't so even do that. So sometimes I'm not sure what the vibe is that you're giving. I can't even you know just I mean? put my pinky finger down. It's just, it was just <laughs> instinct. I don't know. It hurts me to like put my finger and down. And let that be a lesson about your instincts, Chris. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Trust them. That was gaslighting. I didn't mean to gaslight you on camera. I only do that privately. That's a joke. I'm joking. Podians, chill the fuck out. Chris is happy and healthy tell him chris i'm happy and healthy <laughs> <laughs> anyways my favorite actress anne hathaway is, is headlining a new apple tv plus series about we work yeah snooze fast it, god damn it i'm sick of we work everybody's like watch the we work documentary it's like i can't fucking sit through that shit it's also like not fucking interesting now they're doing a fucking series about it the trailer was not for me but I'm going to give it a try because a lot of times trailer, like the inventing Anna trailer wasn't for me either until I started watching the first yeah. episode. And then I thought, OK, here I am. And you never know, like maybe she might outstun mm. us all. And I'm just saying if Anne Hathaway needs a place to stop and promote her TV series, we're right here. You're I'm your biggest fan club. Lizzie will have to do. Lizzie could give a fuck. But no, I ah! also, wait, no, do you saying. not want my dreams to become true? What are your dreams? Anne Hathaway sitting right here. Oh, yeah. Bring her on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's an a warm welcome. 
Hey, Anne, it's me, Lizzie. Do you never Come want on us our to have show. Guests? We want you here. Okay. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was just going to say, I feel like there's a trend right now where everyone's like, all these apps, like, for some reason, like, recently, people are, like, nostalgic for, like, the dot-com boom and, like, all these, like, you know, The Social Network was a great movie, but The Social Network was a great movie because it was made by great filmmakers and great storytellers. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about the guy who created Uber. I don't give a fuck about WeWork. You know what I mean? Like, all this shit is so goddamn boring to me. Like, the Elizabeth Holmes shit doesn't need to be a multi-piece series. Like, it could be a one-time movie, but instead they're making, like, the, there's the Amanda Seyfried. Oh, can't Seyfried. Even, Seyfried. What, is that right? I, I don't know. I was going to say, why are we taking... Anyways, <laughs> she's doing a beautiful job, and it's engaging, and it's wonderful, but it's like, we all know... We all know what happened. Like, that's why these things are being well, made. Well, why did you say she's devastating? She's devastating in it. Because what do you mean? You just said she was good. No, that's what I mean. Like, it's devastating. Like, she's at... You, like... The way that she embodies this character in The Dropout, this character of Elizabeth Holmes, mm-hmm. who was the creator of Theranos. Theranos? I'm Elizabeth Holmes, and I'm the creator of Theranos. She never blinks. Never blinks. But there's this interesting... Thing about Elizabeth Holmes which is that you know she's an out of touch kid her dad worked for Enron which was you know a huge fucking scam her whole passion in life was to be a billionaire and she relentlessly pursued this thing to the tune of a billion fucking dollars mm. scammed people like that's pretty fucking sick girl like you fucking went there and I kind of love that but it's also like I don't need a movie and a Hulu series about it. Well, there's no one regulating who can and can't tell the story, which is the mm. problem. And with all these streaming services, they all want to beat the next person to the punch. And there's also this thing that I've noticed where it's like, if it's not uh, a very successful book or a very successful podcast or a very true rip from the headline story, i.e., you know, uh, the... Inventing Anna? Inventing Anna, the dope... What's the fucking dope one that came out where that guy just won an award? I don't know. Michael Keaton won an award for it. I know it's not called Dope Fest, but I want to say it's called Dope Fest. But it's about the opioid problem. Like all this shit. Honestly, the opioid problem one was probably the best one because it had true drama character driven story arcs that you got really invested in and so what's your issue my issue is like i'm so fucking sick of these scamming fucking scripted series well you don't have to watch them i do though (laughs) but oh and also it's like so if you go into a room and you have like an original show idea they're like well why would people watch it people only want to watch one viral and it's like no i mean like you can have things that go viral that are original too and then they make the adam project did anybody here see that did you see that chris I've never even heard of it. They like hire a little kid to like try and be like witty and snarky like Ryan Reynolds. And I'm just like not here for it. Like Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. You know how Ryan Reynolds, whole shtick is like, I'm rude, but I'm hot. So it's like whatever. And it's funny. And I'm married to Blake Lively. Really? Yeah. Like the what's his character? His. uh, Well, that's how he like Deadpool Deadpool. character. Super tongue in cheek. Sassy. Yeah, but that's not him. I mean, it's the only character he plays. Well, that's because that was like the biggest movie. And then now. Well, even before that, like Vance, what what is his fucking. He's always played that character. He's never played another variation of that person. He's always played that cheeky fucking sassy ass motherfucker. I don't know his filmography, but. If you've seen him in one, you've seen him in all. Basically the same. The Proposal is arguably the most beta role he's ever played, though. Very charming in it. Very charming guy. Dope sick. You can say that out loud. I can't read that far usually. Oh. Dope sick, not dope fest. Anyways. <laughs> what is your anyways? I don't My know anyways what you're is, doing. And also, is the Adam Project even an original thing? All the right. point being, like, we need to start investing in original ideas again, guys. Okay, speaking of unoriginal ideas, which... I think was fantastically done inventing Anna. I finally That's watched not an the, original idea. That's I said, literally speaking of not an original idea. Oh, okay. Listen. I'm going to I'm going to take it back. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought you said speaking of an original idea. No. But you said speaking of an unoriginal idea. Yes. Okay, continue. Which I think they have made very original in their own way. I would argue that this was a very fun series. Yeah. Unlike what you have just described, even though I can't speak on those series because I haven't seen them. So I finally finished. I, let's talk about Inventing Anna. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did you like Inventing Anna? I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. So now you do you feel like an idiot? No. 
<laughs> or like contradicting yourself for everything this long rant i mean you just went i on. i genuinely enjoyed it because i did i wasn't i honestly was not aware of it when it was a viral news and i was not either so it was there was a period of discovery for me what kept me glued through the season was wondering what if anna would ever break if Anna Delvey would ever be like, you're right, I'm Anna Sorka and my dad is poor. I come from nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know that I was ever, because to me, that was the dramatic question mm -hmm. of the entire season or series. Right. Is Anna Delvey real or is Anna Delvey fake? And for a person who wasn't aware of the, you know, actual story, that was enough to keep me hooked. Same. I don't think they ever answered that question. I mean, they kind of did when the writer goes to Russia. Spoilers for everyone who mm -hmm. has waited for some reason a month and a half to watch the series. Um, <laughs> Very angry today. <laughs> it's the cinnamon. You put a shit ton in my thing. What do you expect from me? Fire energy. I mean, I thought it was fantastic. I yeah. love everything Shonda Rhimes does. I, well, I, I Bridgerton was not for me right. specifically, but everything else, like back, even when she was on a, the Queen of ABC and she had you her did Thursday Shonda Thursdays. night. Yeah, yeah, I literally like got together with my friends in all of my twenties and watched her Thursday night lineup, and I loved all of her shows. And I think this is was a beautiful mix of kind of like primetime television with something that has become very topical because of her again and her making this show. And I just thought the it was so fun to watch and i thought the yeah. character was so fun i thought the actress that played anna it was fascinating to me that she actually went to visit anna yeah and kind of got anna's stamp of approval in playing oh, anna's been like her lauding character. her yeah people are like Jule jules is or whatever her name is julia her garner i her, think julia's her accent's whack and she's like actually her accent very good yeah she said well <laughs> she said i've been in prison for four years and so mine has toned down but she was playing me from back Back when yeah. I was she's defensive of the actress which I yeah. think is interesting and so even just as fascinating after watching the series and being opened up to a lot of the characters in her life she recently the real Anna Sorkin Anna Delvine went on Julia Fox's podcast which a Spotify original and uh I found that so much more compelling than her than Julia actually on call her daddy like now I'm thinking is their podcast gonna be kind of good Honestly, like, and I know that this isn't the path you were trying to go down, but I saw Julia Fox in a TikTok with someone, and she's just so down to jump onto someone's TikTok and go, actually, it's Anka Jams, that I'm like, is she cool? What? Do that Is she, like... A cool girl? And he, I'm not going to say she's a cool girl, but I am going to say she's down. And Do I not hate her? What I, Which is so funny. Because I might not hate her. You were... Hated her. You passionately hated Should her. Should I call the intern and see if he wants to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> but what Do I, I love him? What I like about... I don't know that I want her in my inner circle. However, what I do find um, entertaining about someone, which she has a podcast, she's trying to entertain the world. I mean, she was dating Kanye. She She's really like, you know, she's yeah. trying to be a skeptical or a spectacle spectacle. And uh, she's shamelessly herself. Yeah. She reveals Which I love. the darkest moments about herself. And even uh, when she her and Anna were kind of the real Anna were talking about their scammy ways. She goes, we're all Aquarius is here. We're scam artists. And I just was like to call yourself a scam artist and laugh about it. Mm. and think it's iconic. I just like I think I love the I think I love her. The entertainment value was next level because I couldn't I couldn't believe these people were admitting and laughing about their con artist ways. And is that together. nothing if not us? I, well, I Should would not we say I'm a con with artist Anna or a scammer. And Julia? <laughs> Should you we can send take Ju that on yourself. Should we send Anna money? For ADF. I do think it's fascinating. I think I even watched Mark Cuban on Drew Barrymore's talk show talk about Anna saying, well, she wasn't doing things too far off of what every entrepreneur is doing when they come to yeah. New York. Where she went wrong was the stealing from hotels and yeah. causing fraud in that way. But otherwise, she was networking. She was getting her like and the banks. I'm going to say the banks are honestly idiots if they were yeah. going to go through and do their due diligence and pretend she had a trust fund somewhere even though they couldn't validate it yeah if they were still going to give her a loan that's on them being like do your due diligence but the hotel thing is something you kind of really just can't get past i guess i mean yeah that 
that is getting a little bit too wrapped up in the game of it all. But I have to agree with what Mark Cuban said. Like every single time I've been in a situation where I'm asking people to believe in me or I'm asking for someone to give me money, like an investment for a project, every single time it's a fucking scam. Do you know what I mean? Because you're saying to them like, in, well, you're in selling to an film, idea. Yeah. I wouldn't say a scam, but well, you're... the scam is that you believe you're going to be successful, mm -hmm. but there is no proof because you do not have a crystal ball that can say nine months from now this will be successful. You can just say I have a hunch it's going to be successful, but you go into a meeting saying I know for a fact you're going to get a return on your investment, which right. in and of itself. You can't guarantee. You can never guarantee a return on an investment, ever. And if you didn't get that she didn't break from the show, yeah. you get that from the podcast. Yeah. I mean, she still is kind of just giggly and laughing about all of her actions and cons. And, and she's like in a detention center, right? Yeah, which she on her Instagram, she's not running her Instagram, but she has somebody running it for her. So she said it is her. It's yeah. just not physically her and i guess she's saying because she's now being held in a detention center for um visa citizen, reasons yeah, visa reasons um she overstayed her visa and she's saying that this is worse than rikers because yeah. of the way they treat her and they're chalking it up to covid protocol but i i don't know i think she's fascinating i think when she gets out i think it will be interesting to follow her and where she goes i mean i don't know if i want to be in her inner circle or affected by her no but i mean I she doesn't seem like a good person but like just generally speaking she kind of seems like an asshole Mm -hmm. And that's scamming aside, you know what I mean? And but I do respect her scam more than Firefest scam boy. Firefest scam Firefest scam boy felt like some weird fucking I don't know, like yeah. I want a girlfriend shit. And hers is just so much more diabolical. And it's interesting, the through line with like the dropout with the Theranos and this with Anna Delvine. It, I think it, it's Delvey. It Delvey, sorry. It comes from a burning passion of wanting to become more than they've ever experienced It's themselves. wanting to be Mark Cuban. Yeah. And fuck yeah, dude. Because mm -hmm. she could have had it. She was close. She was, oh, she was like Icarus. She flew too close to the sun. Oh, I would love to replace some of these male telltale stories. You know what I mean? With like, instead of like, everyone's like, be careful, don't be like Icarus. It's like, don't be like Anna Sorkin. <laughs> That's true feminism, guys. I've I'm been, not sure I understand feminism. Every time <laughs> Shane asks me a question this week, I'm like, I don't have time for you. I'm building a foundation. <laughs> So basic. And last night he's like, "Are you almost done watching that show?" I said, "I've been done. I'm building a foundation." <laughs> <laughs> he's like so ready for me. To I be don't done. have time for you. <laughs> <laughs> building a foundation. Poor Shane. <laughs> he has to deal with me screaming and stealing, and you just like put your hand in his face <laughs> and tell him to shut up in a horrible accent. Because I don't have time for him. <laughs> <laughs> Should we break down? No, I think we're leaving. It's been an hour. Oh man, I was just having fun. <laughs> well, I we... don't know if they're having fun. I feel like we were a lot. Well, we have two more minutes. Well, let's. I'd like to say a big congratulations to JoJo Siwa on the completion <laughs> of her fucking world tour. <laughs> Hit the yellow. JoJo, you did it, girl. You started this tour when you were 15 and you completed it at the ripe old age of 18 and so much growth, and you're such a positive image. So yeah, also thoughts and prayers to Haley Bieber for a swift recovery. I did want to do some research. We can come back and discuss the warning signs of stroke symptoms and what you should do when you see them and feel I them. I didn't see what had happened to her. She was suffering from stroke-like symptoms, so they rushed her to the hospital, and then it turned out that she had a blood clot, blood clot that she pa her body passed naturally. But sometimes, I'm pretty sure it doesn't pass naturally, and mm. you have what's called like a brain aneurysm, which you could fucking die from, or oh like a pulmonary God. embolism, which I think is in your heart. But those are things I'm really afraid of. And I do know that there are some things you can do to prevent long-term negative impacts from strokes and things like that besides just instantaneously going to the hospital. Yeah, and we do need to make sure we're all getting our regular checkups. Like I'm guilty of not getting physicals when I need them and thinking like, oh, I'm young and I feel healthy, so everything's fine. And that's not always the case. So no. we need to get our checkups. We're gonna run out of time because of memory, but we will so come, come back, back next and week and we'll this. tell you how to prevent. With oh. What? <laughs> That's all right. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoying our podcast. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the sip. sip. <sighs> I thought it would have been a really clean exit if, like, join us next week to prevent strokes. And that's the sip. 
I know. I just think with it having been a reality for someone, it's you like have, a little right, too no. playful. I true. Oh, Lizzie is so insane. What so insane. Mark? You're so insane. I'm working on uh, a foundation. So I we stopped to get lunch and Lizzie goes, oh, well, I'm like this because I'm an only child. And I started to have an epiphany. I was like, oh, my God, you text everyone everything you do because you're an only child. And I was like, oh, my God, how did I never think of this? And then while I'm having this epiphany in my head, she goes, I'm literally not an only child. <laughs> And I was like, oh, you do have a brother. How many siblings do you have? I mean, technically, it's just Nick. I know. Whoa. I know nothing about you. Well, it's because I don't. I didn't even know Nick's name. I mean, it's because I don't talk to him. Will this gain us sympathy and empathy for the episode? Will I be less of an asshole if, I, if we go into my, my family trauma? <laughs> okay. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. <laughs> I just can't believe what you just did. This this ad. Was like, you need to talk about your family trauma now to gain empathy for that segue. <laughs> this ad will be placed way prior to this. This is not the placement. Yeah, right. You think we're doing an ad at the very end of the episode? No, I know, but I think what happened at the beginning and of this. Can I tell you something? No. What I had to start doing for this podcast. I know you have to put a page marker over it because I look dead inside through every. Yes, I have to cover our faces during ad reads because Lizzie can't keep it together for one minute she has to make crazy faces she has to go on her phone she has to reply to emails so i just had to start being like well i just have to cover our faces because she's never her one like you have this beautiful job where you just come and sit down for an hour i deal with all the production and she can't even hey, save face for who, an ad who, where did all these stories come from a lot of them came from you which one came from you um, I did Anne Hathaway. Oh, right. I did Skeet uh, Text Kanye. I did, did you? Inventing Anna. Yeah, I did put that. Inventing okay. Anna review. Um, and then. All right. It is a very fair game. Okay. Tom for who? Bar for us. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I can't. What am I supposed to do? Do you not know how much post-production and thumbnailing I have to do? No, so much. I wasn't. I didn't. I take it all back. Okay. Again, you. let's not forget my family trauma. <laughs> I've been through a lot. <laughs> Let's cut me a break, you guys!